Hello YouTube friends and welcome to another video. My name is Donovan and today I'm going to be talking about how we are going to go about reading the entire Bible in a year. And yes, this is a Bible. This is the Bible I use and I read every single day for the most part. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in to step number one. And step number one of the Bible reading plan is to first pick out a Bible that you're comfortable with. There are so many different versions of the Bible. There are so many different types of Bibles. There's so many different types of designs for Bibles too. As you can see, my Bible, it has space for notes on the side so that you're easily able to write down your thoughts and write down key points that stand out to you as you read. I highly encourage you to get a Bible that has some notes sections because it really helps me stay engaged with the text as I read it. As you can see, I have a ton of text that I write on this Bible. It's been very, very helpful. If you actually want this Bible, I'll leave the link for it in the description below. If you're looking to do the Bible in a year plan, this one is perfect. I highly encourage you to at least check it out. With that being said, once you have found a Bible that you are comfortable with and that you would like to use in your reading plan throughout the entire year, now it's actually time to pick a specific Bible in a year plan. There are so many different Bible in a year plans that it can be overwhelming. It's like, which one do you want to choose? There's ones that go chronologically. There's ones that break up the text a lot. There's ones where you are supposed to read every single day. There's other ones where you don't have to read every single day. So it's important to understand what your preferences are when you choose a Bible reading plan. Now, I highly encourage you to do a Bible reading plan that is affiliated with your church. For example, the one I do and that I'm reading this year currently is the one through my church. And I have found it to be wonderful. Not only do I have a plan that is affiliated with my church, but other members of my church are also reading the same exact plan along with me so I can discuss what I'm reading about with them. So it really brings a valuable connection not only to me in the Bible, but also to me in my church community as well. So it's important to really choose a reading plan that you can possibly do with other people. So yeah, just find a plan that suits your needs in terms of structure. In terms of the structure, by the way, I highly encourage you to not read the Bible chronologically because that can be a lot of Old Testament at once. And the Old Testament is the biggest chunk of the Bible. It contains roughly, if I had to guess, like 75 or 80% of the entire Bible is the Old Testament. Now, I think it might be around 70%. Either way, it's mostly Old Testament. So it's important to understand that you will be reading the Old Testament for a very long time before you actually get into the parts about Jesus in the New Testament. So I encourage you to choose a plan where you're going to be reading both the Old Testament and the New Testament every single day. That way you can kind of combine the history leading up to the New Testament while also getting the spiritual fruit from the New Testament where Jesus is relevant. Because if you don't know, Jesus is not in the Old Testament. What separates the New Testament from the Old Testament is the birth of Jesus Christ. So once you have picked out a Bible that you're gonna read, and once you have picked out a plan that you're going to read as well, the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is set aside time each day. Now this might sound obvious, but it's important to understand that you are committing to a year-long Bible reading plan. This plan is not designed for a few weeks of your life or a few months even. This is 12 months of your life. It is a full year of dedication to reading all the contents in the Old and New Testament of the Bible. So it's important that you understand the commitment that you're getting yourself into because the last thing you want is to go strong like 21 days into, into January and you're still feeling good, but then when February rolls around, it's like, dang. This is a lot of reading to do because there will be times where you will not feel like reading the Bible. And it's important to understand like you need to set aside time specifically to read the Bible each and every day. Otherwise, you're not going to find the time to stay with the plan. And once you fall behind, it is very hard to catch up. And trust me, I have fallen behind multiple times in this reading plan. There have been times where I've fallen behind by a week or even two weeks of the plan. And I have actually managed to catch back up. Now, that's not going to be the case for everybody. So it's important to understand that when you fall behind, you are just digging yourself into a hole that is going to be very difficult to get yourself out of. So yes, you need to pick a time to read the Bible each and every day. Obviously, it can be different timing each day. But if you have a structure where you wake up and the first thing you do is read the Bible, not only is that going to help you be consistent throughout this reading plan, 
but it's also going to set a great tone for your day and for your week as well. So I highly recommend reading the Bible in the morning if possible, but obviously whatever works best for your schedule. So the next thing I recommend is to break up your reading into manageable portions. So there are going to be days where you want to read a lot of the Bible. You just feel very encouraged. You would just want to dive into a lot of scripture that day. That's great. The problem is when you increase your quantity, it can sometimes diminish the quality of return that you're getting from the Bible. Because the whole point of reading the Bible in a year is to not just check it off your bucket list. That's not what it should be about. It should be about getting closer to God and growing your relationship with Jesus Christ. So if that is your main goal, you don't want to you know, speed read through it. You don't want to skim through the Bible. You don't want to just check off the number of pages that you're reading each day. You want to make sure you're actively engaging. So that's why it's important to break up your readings into manageable chunks to where you can stay fully engaged and really focus on the text as you're reading. And you just want to make sure that you're not speed running through the text. So yes, this brings me to my next tip. You need to make sure that you're taking notes during your reading and after your reading as well. Another really important thing that you want to take away from reading the Bible is to just expand your knowledge about who God is and also expand your knowledge on the history of the Old Testament and how it leads up to the New Testament. Because personally, what I want to do is I want to do the reading plan in a year every single year for the rest of my life. That is a goal that I have. And every year I want to be learning new things. And if I continued using the same strategy year over year, if I wasn't taking notes, if I wasn't reflecting on the reading, it would be very hard for me to continue expanding my knowledge each and every year. So that's why taking notes, actively engaging with the text, and reflecting on your readings each and every day is essential if you want to truly take away new knowledge and take away new insight from what you are getting out of your reading each day. And that brings me to my next tip here. Stay flexible with your reading. It's important to understand that there are going to be days that you miss. It's going to happen. Life happens. Life gets in the way whether it be traveling, whether it be just anxiety, stress, whatever it may be that causes you to miss a day of reading the Bible, just know that there will be days where you just simply won't be able to read because it's happened to me over and over again throughout my reading plan. However, when you stay flexible, what I mean by that is it's important to be able to adapt to your situation. Say that you miss two days in a row. Well, you're obviously going to have to make up those two days in addition to also reading that third day's worth of reading as well. So it's important to understand that you're going to have to probably give some time here, take some time here, and you're really going to have to be flexible with when you're able to read and how much you're actually reading as well. Because there's going to be days where you read for five minutes. There's going to be days where you read for zero minutes. But there's also going to be days where you're going to need to catch up and you're going to read for an hour or maybe even two hours. By the way, with my reading plan, it requires around 25 minutes of reading each and every day. But the more you actively engage with the text, obviously, the more time it's going to take you to write down notes and to do some self-reflection as well. So the more you engage, the more time you're going to need to allocate each day into reading the Bible. All right, this next tip is very important, and I highly encourage you to do this the best that you possibly can, but find an accountability partner. It's so important to have someone doing the reading plan with you. For example, I do the reading plan with my girlfriend. Me and her hold each other accountable. Having my girlfriend as my accountability partner when it comes to the reading plan has been so critical. It has been so encouraging seeing that she continues reading and she's actually ahead of me right now in the reading plan. So it encourages me to continue reading and to continue to catch up because like I said, I am behind on the reading plan by just a few days now. It used to be a lot worse, but I have been so encouraged by my girlfriend who continues to stay on track with the reading plan. But yes, having an accountability partner has been huge. It's been just over 65 days now, just over two months basically of doing this reading plan. It's just so encouraging having others doing the same plan as you and holding each other accountable so that you can ultimately grow in Christ together. And this leads me to my final tip that I have for you all. It's important to pray to God for guidance and understanding before you read. This is very important, guys, because God is our guider. He will guide us along this journey. And the reading plan in a year is hard. It is meant to be challenging. And it's so worth it, though, 
when you stick to it, because not only are you overcoming a big challenge in reading the Bible in a year, but you're also building your relationship with God and you're getting closer to God if you're reading the Bible for the right reasons. So I highly encourage you before you read each and every day to pray for guidance and understanding as you read, because it can be one thing to read, but it's another thing to understand what you're reading. So it's really important that you pray for these things because God hears your prayers and he sees that you're putting in effort to try to get to know him better. So asking for that guidance and asking for that understanding is going to be essential on your journey in reading the Bible in a full year. So guys, with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it useful in some way, shape, or form. If you did, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share this video with a friend. If you know anyone at all who is interested in reading the Bible in a year or just reading the Bible in general and they're trying to take their faith more seriously, send this video to them because it can be a game changer if someone is truly trying to take on the challenge of reading this Bible, whether it be for the first time or whether it be for the 50th time, I think these tips can be very useful to someone out there that you may know. So be sure to share this video. And like I said, if you're interested in getting a Bible like this that has notes sections and overall it's just the perfect Bible, I highly recommend it for the convenience of just reading. It has a bookmark as well. It's the perfect size for church as well if you're taking it to church. It's very easy to manage and navigate if you want it check it out. Link is in the description below. And with that being said, guys, I'll see you in future videos. Have a blessed day. Take care and peace.